What is going on, Reset Nation? Welcome back to another episode of Operation Self Reset. I am Jacob Naraki, and this is a special episode because I am coming to you live from the Children's Hospital here in Milwaukee, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, if I can even say my own city right. Um, the reason why I am here, as you may know if you are a fan, uh, lately, um, February 16th of 2015, my wife and I gave birth to our second son, Ethan William Naraki, 8 pounds, 10 ounces, healthy little boy. Everything was going really, really well. And then he acquired a cold from our toddler. Um, the virus that he has is RSV. Basically, it's the common cold. Just because his body is so small and frail and not developed, he's unable to fight it on his own. So we had to um, come to the Children's Hospital, and we've been here for the last four days. I'm not going to lie to you, we, we've kind of gone a little insane, not leaving the the room. Uh, just uh, We've gone outside very little, and, um, and it, it, it's tough to uh, be located within a hospital. But with that being said... You know, as as you know, this podcast is all about self empowerment. You know, reinventing yourself and getting out, getting out of the slumps of your own personal life. And I tell you what, if you are really in a negative place, if things aren't going well, and you're thinking, "Poor me," and, and and all these emotions that are going on, all it takes is one walk through the the halls of, of a hospital. It doesn't have to be a children's hospital to make you appreciative of how good you have things. And obviously there's disease and illnesses and accidents and you know job loss and relationship breakups that really make us feel like we are truly down in the dumps. But the one thing that um, really inspired me this last four, couple of four days is that the children that are in, or at least on our floor, and there's 12 floors here in the Children's Hospital in Milwaukee, um, it makes you understand how appreciative you are to have what you have accomplished in your own personal life. And obviously, things may not be going the direction that you want, but nonetheless, um, we are all very blessed to be healthy, listening to podcasts, and trying to do our best to um, inspire the world. And, and you might hear in the background my little guy waking up because it's uh, feeding time. But enough about me. We're talking about life reinventation, a life purpose, life everything. And the guest that we have on today is Stephanie Ziv, um, amazing woman. Truly, once you hear her voice and understand her story, she is a true giver. And the one thing that she's going to explain, especially in this interview, is that she has a Facebook page called On The Hook, On The Hook Movement. And it's all about getting out there putting yourself on the hook and making sure you follow through on your goals. And as you know, I love goals. I love setting goals. I love reaching goals. I love setting bigger uh, goals as time goes on. And the one thing that um, Stephanie has put together is basically making sure that you're held accountable. And it doesn't matter if you have a best friend, if they get your goals or they don't, or if you don't want to share your goals with somebody that you know personally, jump on her Facebook page um, that she'll be explaining here to hold yourself accountable. Because once you get on that page, and even if you don't sign up and make a video and put yourself on the hook, watch other people and be supportive of, of other people in their journey of, of reaching their own personal goal. And I'm pretty sure it's going to motivate yourself. And, um, and with that being said, I mean, this, this interview is really going to inspire you. So, um, enjoy the interview with Stephanie and we'll, we will see you on the backside. Hey guys, and welcome back. Today we have on Stephanie Ziv and she is a certified life coach, but her life did not start there. She actually started off as a TV executive and found her way into helping people find their purpose and bring it to life. Stephanie, thank you so much for coming on the Operation Self Reset podcast. Thank you so much for having me. No problem. You know, this podcast, we talk about a lot of different things. We talk about goal setting and stuff like that. And I was just recently looking at your bio, and at the bottom, it said December 31st, 2014, you're going to have completed your um, proposal for your book. Now, we all, the listeners involved, we all have goals. We try to set them and reach them, especially when we have a date that we know we want to reach them by. Are you on course to hitting that goal? Uh, I am, but I'll tell you why. <laughs> I'll tell you why. I, I am the founder of something called the On the Hook Movement. And the essence of this is we live in a land where, as human beings, we let ourselves off the hook every day, right? For anything. It doesn't matter. 
if we we wake up, we you know we go to bed thinking we're going to wake up and go to the gym, and then we sleep in. We we say we'll we'll meditate, and we don't. We we say we're going to run a marathon, and we gain ten pounds, and you know from eating on the couch and watching TV. It's like we just are. In many ways, there's just a lack of follow through. So so selfishly, <laughs> I um, I had th- th- this book proposal kind of been something that I've been working on for far too long. And I just was not doing it. I was letting myself off the hook. And I, I decided that I have an, the, the Facebook page, the On the Hook Movement, is really an accountability community that had not, I had not really done much with. But just several, I would say like four weeks ago, I actually put myself on video and said, I am putting myself on the hook to do this. By the end of the year, I am inviting all of you to join me in whatever lingering goal you have for the end of 2014. Let's not worry about 2015 yet. We, we'll, we'll put enough pressure on ourselves then. But what would it be like to complete the year? So I started this thing called the, um, the Great 2014 On the Hook End of the Year Rally. And people, and people have been putting themselves on videos, claiming what it is they're going to be doing, and then inviting people into the mix to also put themselves on video and it's been incredible so yes i am on track it's very exciting (laughs) that is awesome and can anybody join up or you have to it's a totally free service at the moment it's it is a massive accountability and buddy system i like to call it and people are really taking advantage of it and in the new year i'm gonna you know refocus on 2015 but it's absolutely a call to action for anyone who feels like they don't have the support to follow through. And from my perspective, the only way to do it is, is with accountability and with a buddy or a coach or, um, you know, someone who is seeing you claim what it is that you say you want to do. I say, you know, say what you mean and do what you say. Oh, for sure. You know, and it's funny because before we started recording, you and I were talking about the length of different podcasts and interviews and stuff like that. And and the one thing that I said, you know, sometimes these these interviews get really lengthy and it's tough for the individual that's listening to really walk away with something that's like, oh, I should do that or I should sign up for that or I should read that book or whatever. And it's an overload of information and, and then they just end up doing nothing and they just continue to listen on to the next podcast or whatever. So I think that is actually a really good thing that obviously that you started um, to help individuals really stay the course because it's easy for one person to say, you know, like you said, all those things, lose the weight, write that book, you know, sit down 20 minutes and meditate or journal, whatever. And like gets in the way, you know, we're tired, we're grumpy, you know, we, we ate that late dinner. I got to put the kids to sleep, all that stuff. But if you get on, uh, well, first of all, you put yourself out there on your own website, but if you have a video of yourself, put it on a Facebook group and you got other people around you going, Hey, did you do that? I think that is that is really huge. So do you have a link for that? The Facebook is just, if you go to Facebook and you type in the On The Hook movement, it'll take you there. You just have to ask to be a part of it, but any member can say, can invite you in. So um, cool. it's a closed group, but it's not a secret group. So it's just, yeah, but I, I would love to, uh, it's going to be a big thing. I'm, I'm actually going to be on the Today Show at, at least scheduled at the moment for January 15th, and I'm going to bring this up. So the community is building and growing every day, and I would love your your listeners to join us in oh, this. Oh, for sure. Part. Yeah, we'll, we'll put that in the show notes. Speaking of the Today Show, you are a, a woman that is always intermixing with uh, news media, and the Today Show obviously is a huge platform. You did not start by speaking on the Today Show and speaking about coaching and setting goals and your passion and all that stuff. How did you get into this space, first off? The, you know, that's, a, that's an interesting question. I actually just did a whole, uh, I, I spoke to a whole group of, of, of women entrepreneurs about this very thing. They, I got in because I was in the entertainment industry for 20 years and I made a lot of connections and ironically just was when I was still in the entertainment industry on the other side of it, I was, I actually interviewed a guy to to come work for me when I was running development at a production company and the guy was a, um, he was a, a producer at the Today Show, which didn't have any bearing effect on me at the time, but years later he would uh, we, we would, we would reconnect and he would say, you know, and so he was like, you should really be on the today show. I was like, yeah, I should. I should. Yeah. 
And, you know, look, for me, it was it was a little magical and it was a little, you know, intentioning since I was 15 years old that I wanted to be, you know, on television in a in a way that's, you know, having a positive effect. And and in my situation, I really did kind of walk in with a lot of enthusiasm and no credentials. I I I, I did not have a book written. I, I was not on the speaking circuit. I just was a really passionate person with an excellent idea. And so in that regard, I did go in and wow them. And I kind of had the, the magic flow happen. And I and I and I did get on the show. However, I actually have a really good, uh, I do have some good advice about this. If you have viewers who are interested in that type of media or, or print media or anything, the, the way to do it, first of all, if, if, there, if there's video, if people are interested in being on television, you must have a YouTube channel, which at the time I didn't have either. So I'm speaking as someone who has done research <laughs> since. <laughs> right, thanks. I'm an anomaly. Don't listen to me in terms of my own experience. However, I've talked to many producers of these shows since, and they've given some really sound advice, one of which is have a YouTube channel do what you love, you know, kind of, they want to see that you can be on television and, and, and speak in, in some sort of way that is profound and ideally in sound bites and, um, just do your, do you and let them see that you can actually function perform. and perform and, and be a television presence that they can rely upon. And then, um, the other thing that they really mentioned that I thought was so interesting was to, if you follow the, if you follow the producers of the television show that you want to be on, you can then tweet them directly and say, hey, I have a great idea. I'm a coach or I'm an entrepreneur or I'm a whatever. And I would love to talk to you about this idea. May I email you? And and oftentimes they will write back because you have to think about these producers are producing live television. They need 97 gazillion ideas. Oh, sure. Minutes. So you're never really a bother, but they said, do not call the general line at the, at the network. Do not just, um, do not call the general line. Do not, um, do not just, do not just tweet the show, find a specific producer, find out their name, write to them, pitch them something. Actually, they said more is better than less in terms of here's the segment idea I have. Here's how I see it working. This is my participation in it. They really like the detail, so it was a really. Or awesome. so it's not good to show up at their house or anything like that, like to sleep in their car, you know, and then pop up, you know, the back seat or something. There might be a limit. There we're, might be a okay. Limit. Okay. I just want to walk. Right. I'm not saying. But we're friends on Facebook, right? I mean, hey, you know, if we're friends on Facebook, it means that that's okay. I can kind of you know creep around your house. No, that's actually really good. Uh, personally, obviously, you know, I'm a uh, beginner. Um, I have a YouTube channel, so maybe on the 15th when you're just chatting with the producers, be like, hey, this guy Jake from Milwaukee is amazing. We yeah. got to get him out here. So just saying, I'm just saying, if, you know, conversation gets a little weird, uh, throw my name around. But anyway, it's not about me. It's about the listeners. But wait, but the best thing, Jake, is you and the listeners, it's really also about the idea. Like I, I came from the world of television. If I had nothing else with me, I was an executive at a network. All people did all day long was pitch to me. I was, and then I had to pitch up into, oh, you know, sure. into to get the buy-in for the show. So I, I'm kind of a TV guy, title girl. I'm one of those people. By I, I know maybe for the, the the younger viewers, they may not know what that means. But but you know, in in the old TV guides, you had to really capture, you had to grab people's attention with one quick line so that you oh, knew sure. you knew what it was, right? So, um, so when I pitched my, my idea to the, to the, to the, um, to the Today Show, it was coach me if you can. And they like immediately got it. Even though I had like a long, big, I had an amazing pitch for it. They distilled it down to a Q and a like woman on the street and we would give advice. But, um, but still that the title was gold and wow, that, that was helpful. Job. That is, I was, uh, I saw that on obviously on your website, and I was like, oh, that's a pretty cool, catchy title, you know. And I, I just assumed that was the high ups at uh, the Today Show, um, but really, a lot of probably, obviously, more ideas or more show segments have come out of just general people pitching stuff or whatever. It wasn't the big, you know, executives or anything like that that are creating these one line, um, you know, uh, home runs. So, ah, uh, interesting. And you know, the cool part is too. I mean, you, you kind of do have a, a unique background in that, you know, you're now in a space talking about people's lives, talking about passion and all that stuff. And obviously, you're a very passionate woman. Um, you know, being from the TV to now coaching one-on-one -on -one is a huge, is a, is a big gap. 
Um, when, when did you realize that you wanted to start helping people on a personal level instead of producing more, um, entertainment value? Um, well, I, you know, I, I always say I'm a camp counselor at heart. You know, I grew up going to summer camp since I was seven. And then when I was 10, it was a sleepover camp. I, I literally did not leave camp until I was 24 years old. I was the assistant director of my summer camp. Nice. Wow. And I feel like the essence of that role is the essence of a coach. And that that's, so I, I always had that in me. And so even when I was, um, being, fancy in the in the entertainment industry my my real love was managing my team and really being the 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 person who could love them up and support them in getting to the next level and you know really I was coaching I think I've been coaching since I was six (laughs) you know um so so eventually what what happened simply was I just realized that I hated my boss and I hated my boyfriend and something had to change (laughs) and I and I really, it was more than I just hated my boss. I, I say that in a way that I, I, you know, I actually think that my boss was my greatest teacher because I realized I didn't want his job and I didn't want the president sure. and I didn't want their jobs. And what I really wanted was to facilitate personal awareness workshops. That's what I really wanted to do. I really, really, what I really wanted to do when I was little is I wanted to be Phil Donahue because <laughs> I'm pre Oprah. So it was, um, you know, but I really loved that connection and that interaction. And so, so while I was at while I was at the network, I was getting certified on the side as a life coach, and then within within um, sixteen days of getting of getting uh, certified, I also got let go with a nice severance. So it was it kind of worked out the way it was supposed to. Wow, good for you, good for you. And uh, there's a lot of values in there. Um, I think for the listener that's maybe looking for that transition into a new career, new path, uh, stepping outside of the box. Uh, what do you have for them? Would it be just take night courses, you know, get interested in different things, um, see what, you know, what kind of strikes you and just pursue that while taking, you know, obviously taking care of the day job? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I am a huge fan of do what you love on the side. I felt like while I was getting certified and had a full-time job and that job was a big demanding job. Um, I, you know, I was at a vice president level and that was, that, that meant that I worked a lot. So, but, but my getting that certification was so important to me and I found the time and I craved the time. So I, I loved every minute that I was getting to, to do my coaching stuff. I, what I, I am a huge believer in, uh, in be smart in the transition. I do not believe in just walking in and doing the dramatic quit and, sure. Uh, though I've had many fantasies and uh, many times in my life to do that, but I, I didn't. Um, so I, I just say be smart because also I, you know, in all honesty and just, you know, in the spirit of, of being authentic and, and open and just to also let your listeners know that I am not speaking as a perfect person, what? Despite my efforts, despite my efforts, but you know, uh, I, this is okay. idea. I left, I did leave that job with a really big, I, I had a really nice severance, which was sure. very cheap, right? But let me tell you something. I had no idea what I was doing when it came to business. And when I was 40 years old, I failed completely or so that that's, or I, I or basically let's say, let's say I was, I was, I, I entered the biggest classroom of my life, which was called my father's couch. I had to actually, I completely lost everything. I had nothing. And I had to move back into my parents' house when I was 40 years old and start again because wow. I did not, I did not know how to run a business. And I knew I wanted to coach, but I didn't know how to make it work. So I am speaking to you today as someone who has, you know, I, I, thankfully I was able to get I was able to get back on my feet within two months, and but I did have to go back into the entertainment industry and kind of get my feet back on the ground and then build my business again. Wow. So, so I say that because I never, it's, I think it's easy to give our power away and to look at everybody else doing it right and better and whatever. And I just don't want, I'm just not, I am very, very, very human and very real. And I have fallen down many, many, many times and made bad turns and wrong turns, but I, I keep getting up faster. And I think that's the key. So, so, so in order to set yourself up for success, I, I just, you know, you have to really think about what do you really need to do that without making a rash, um, move, you know, what, what is it that you love? Start to do it. You might decide that you actually hate it. 
I always say change the goal to meet the goal. I, I am not the biggest fan of like, this is the one way and this is the one thing and only this. In my experience with myself and clients, I walk down a path, they walk down a path halfway through. They're like, this is not the path I want to be on. Yeah. So, and then what, what would it be like to change the goal to meet the goal instead of beating yourself up or not liking this anymore or feeling motivated to continue on? It's, a, it's about reevaluating all the time and making sure that you're, you're keeping yourself aligned with, with your purpose and also your needs in this physical world as well as the spiritual fulfillment. Oh, for sure. You know, it's, it's that, you know, like bootstrapping, it's more known for entrepreneur mindsets and, you know, creating nothing out of thin air, but it's very true. Instead of, you know, investing now, obviously I started a podcast, you know, I could have bought the whole studio and, and padded the room, soundproofed and all that stuff. And I sat down with the first couple of interviews and be like, well, I hate this. I hate being stuck in this room. I feel like, you know, I'm going crazy. And then I ditch it and I spent all this money, wasted all this time as opposed to just dabbling with it, you know, talking with people and seeing if it does interest me and moving on. And I think that's a really good point because some people feel like they have to go all the way in to really read the benefits. But like you said, sometimes your goals change it. Sometimes your mindset changes. Sometimes you just have different feelings about things that maybe you did not really investigate as well as you should have. But I think you had a really good quote there to change or how, what was that quote? about to change the goal to meet the goal yeah change the goal to meet the goal awesome awesome that's that's really powerful stuff and one other thing i want to quickly say about anyone who feels like they're in that they're in that job that they really are feeling like is soul sucking and they're not and they want to make another move is to see the job that you have right now if you really cannot leave the job to see it as a to see it as a bridge job to see it as the thing that is bridging you from one place to another you can also look at it as your your first investor <laughs> you sure. know this is the part this is the job that's investing money in you so that you can explore these other things you know this is their jobs are not always evil if i had changed my relationship to my job at the time or my relationship to my boss at the time it, things might have been a little different i i have no regrets the way it worked out and you know um, I might have taken some time to understand business a little more while I still had this paycheck coming in. Oh, for sure. And and is that one of the biggest lessons that you learned from going to your father's couch? You know, if you reflect, is that it? I mean, you know, doing a little more research, you know, education in different subjects before taking the leap? Um. Yeah, I think that, you know, or, or if that's not it, I'm just asking, you know, what is the biggest lesson that you learned from, you know, uh, burning through all your money and, and having to move back with the parents at the age of 40? I think that for me, it was really when I look back, it was I just was not putting myself out there. I was too busy worrying about all my systems and how my website uh, looked sure. and I wanted. I was very I mean, I joke about my perfectionism, but it really is a real thing for me. So, and it really got in my way and limited me. So I, I say, you know, perfection plus pressure equals procrastination. So my perfection was putting, I, and, and, you know, added with, with the pressure I put on myself to be that level of like perfect before I, I share myself just led me to procrastinate, to not go out into the world, to not just start speaking, to not just put, you know, I was doing some workshops. I was doing, I had some clients for sure. But I just wasn't out there in the way that I know that I'm supposed to be, you know? Right. So that was my, that was, that was a big lesson. Um, if I was to call you up and say, Stephanie, you know what? I'm one that is obsessed with keeping my place absolutely spotless. I take that now into my business. I take that home. My relationships are falling apart. My business is falling apart. Where do you start with somebody that has, I don't want to say chronic a chronic case of, you know, you know, for you, for being perfect, for the other person, you know, clean freak, you know, with these huge one-sided approach to life, how do we balance it out? And how do we just kind of keep everything flowing together? Do you have any suggestions for that type of person? I have two things. One, one is what I said earlier, which is how you relate to the issue is the issue. So one of the first questions to say is, how am I relating to my house being out of order? You know, am I, am I relating to it like, as um, if it's not if it's not in order, then I I can't I'm not allowed I can't put myself out there. If it's not in order, then it's not good enough. You know what what is that relationship that you're having, or that judgment that you're having to the thing? And the second thing is I I ask clients who's sitting at the head of the table. So if we have if we think about all the parts within us at any given moment, we all have a lot of parts, right? We have 
Um, we have the, the, the judge, we have the generous part. We have the, we have love, we have, we have kindness. We have, um, you know, we, we have and any limiting belief. We have the not enough part, right? We, we all have different parts at different, at different times. We sometimes have martyr, we have perfection, right? All that stuff. So the question is who's sitting at the head of the table, who is running your show? If it's, if in my case, you know, I keep using the perfection, but it, when perfection runs my show, let me tell you something. There is no, uh, there is no healthy adult in the room. You know, I'm making disengaged decisions. I'm keeping myself hidden. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's, it's keeping myself separate, you know? So you have to think to yourself, if you're that obsessed in the case that, that you brought up with, with, the, with being neat, right. And having everything in order, who's sitting at the head of the table. Is it the taskmaster who says this, this has, you know, you cannot go out into the world with any mess. You know, this is not okay. And so the opportunity then is once you identify who's sitting at the head of the table, when you name it, you can tame it. And then once you identify that, you go, okay, if this part is here, if you shrink it down and think of it like a little kid, then you can bring the healthy adult to the table. It's like you wouldn't let a three-year-old drive the car. So what, what, what would the healthy adult do? They would come in. They would say, come here, honey bunny. Let me put you in the back seat. You're gonna, I'm just going to strap you in. I'm going to take over the wheel, and I'm going to take us to where we need to go, and I'm going to love you up in the meantime, right? Awesome. Yeah. First of all, you have a lot of good little one-liners that you zip in there. You're really good. You have some awesome stuff that you're like, I think that resonates with people like right to the bone. You're like, oh yeah. Like, I mean, a couple of times I'm like, oh, that was really good. Like, that was really powerful. Um, Stephanie, honestly, like you got some great stuff and obviously uh, you're doing a great job by, by spreading the, the words and the things that you believe that are really um, can help people change their lives. Two questions before we let you go. Number one, you talk about true gifts. Uh, you know what? If there's somebody listening to this and they actually enjoy their job, you know, they're just looking to improve their life. How do they find something different in their life? How do they find maybe their passion or just something that that spire, you know, sparks an interest to them or, or to make them realize, wow, I am very gifted in this subject? When I help people figure out their purpose, I actually ask them to only do it in three words. And the three words are two verb noun. So it could be two, you know, and it could be two give love. It could, it, it could be two cultivate calm. It could be two uh, bring freedom. And then I add to myself and others. So, so the whole statement is two verb noun to myself and others. And I think if you think about what is it that, that literally drives you that, that makes your, your world go around in a very natural way that is not even, you don't even think about it, but it just lifts you up and brings you to a higher place naturally. For me, it's connection. I'm, I'm, I know this isn't exactly my, my formula because I do two, uh, two adverb verb, but, but mine is to powerfully and enthusiastically connect with myself and others. That is my purpose. I know that when I connect with myself, I feel good. When I connect with, uh, you know, a, 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 I really am very big into Broadway. When I go to the theater and I connect with the, with, with the story, I feel, I feel uplifted. Um, when I connect with, with, you and your listeners, when I connect with, with, with clients, with my family, friends, etc. So I know that that's my thing, you know, and then this whole on the hook movement is a thousand percent about connection, right? It's right. all about let's connect and accountability and love each other up and be here in a gentle, awesome way, especially when our critics come, come to the head of the table, let us be here to, you know, to just distill that. But um, I think it's just really about, and I know it sounds so cliche, pay attention to the thing that, that you really love to do. But I would say just go underneath it a little bit. What's the essence of that thing? You know, if you love to talk to your friends, what is it about that? You know, what, what's underneath that? Is it because you are a bringer of love? Is it because you, you love to listen because you're empathic? And if so, does that translate into something else that maybe you want to do to expand? Do you want to bring that into a volunteer situation? If it is about, you know, creating beauty, is there something that you haven't done yet in the world of art or maybe, you know, you know, flower arranging? I don't know. But it's a matter of really being in the inquiry of what is the essence of me? What is my purpose? What is the essence of the thing that I love to do? And just keep kind of digging underneath that. Nice job. You're very good. I think the listener is 
is probably squirming for a piece of paper right now and, and trying to write down their purpose statement. And, uh, you know, if you guys didn't get that, um, I will put provide that in the show notes for you guys to reflect on and, uh, you know, find something that resonates with you and, and your kind of powerful statement. The last question I have, this is called Operation Self-Reset, changing the person you are to the person you want to become. What does a self-reset mean to you? Hmm. That's an excellent question. Um, for me, the self reset is as simple as uh, honestly, I, I, I reset every <laughs> several times a day, <laughs> especially when my, when my perfection is sitting at the head of the table. I think that for me that, that, I mean, and honestly, when I, when I'm with my groups, um, you know, I'll be honest with you. I have my last session tonight of, of a group coaching program that I've been running for three months and I just had these these bracelets made for, for them, which on it has the name of their, uh, their higher self or their future self, or let's say their healthy adult, but we, everybody named them in, in an I am statement. So I think that that's, and I, and my whole thing is about wearing, and I have mine on right now. Mine is, I am the queen. (laughs) (laughs) When I, when I look at this and I'm looking at it right now, I am reminded to come back to center. It's not about queen ego. It's right. about what is the queen. The essence of the queen is she's a receiver. She's also a giver, but she fills herself first, right? She's And, and it, she's very powerful, but also very loving. And so it's um, so it, to me, the reset is always checking in about who's sitting at the head of the table and as much as possible to bring the healthy adult or whatever form you say it is to that head of the table. Stephanie. You knocked it out of the park, my lady. Wow. Very good information. Awesome stuff. Uh, Great resources. How can people get in touch with you? Um, uh, You can email me. My name is a little tricky because I'm Stephanie with an F like Stephanie Powers. So my email is Stephanie, S-T-E-F like Frank, A-N-I-E. And then my last name, uh, no, it's Stephanie at StephanieZiv.com. And that you can also just put, I guess, in the notes, my, the spelling. Yeah, of my I, will. I will. And so email is great. I also would so love to, uh, to say a hearty yes to inviting you into the on the hook movement, Facebook page. So we can start to get this, this, uh, party going in the new year and really, you know, excitedly and lovingly and enthusiastically holding you accountable to what you want to make happen in 2015. And I also offer um, complimentary coaching sessions on the phone for like 20 minutes. So I would be happy to, um, I'd be happy to hear from anyone who's interested in that as well. Oh, for sure. If you guys resonate with Stephanie, um, obviously you can just uh, tell she's a very educated, passionate, uh, brilliant woman that can uh, help you in whatever endeavor that is in your current life. Uh, Stephanie, um, I'll provide all the show notes, um, or excuse me, all the links, your email, all that stuff provided, um, in the the show notes and, and, and stuff like that. So, uh, very good. I appreciate your time. Thank you so much for everything. And, uh, we'll talk to you soon. Thank you so much, Jake. I really, I loved this. I, I really appreciate the time. Thank you. Thanks again to Stephanie for coming on the Operation Self Reset podcast. If you're interested in hooking up with her, getting more information, finding out what does she do, um, head on over to operationselfreset.com forward slash Stephanie, and you can find all the links and resources. And one of the cool things on her own personal website, uh, you can see her on the Today Show. Um, she lives in New York. She does a lot of um, appearances. And it's really cool to see her in her element. Uh, she is very, very good at what she does. And she's just a genuine human being awesome, awesome person. Um, I'd highly suggest just getting in contact with her and either appreciating her for coming on and inspiring you or finding out more what she does. And lastly, another plug, literally get get and join the On The Hook movement. It's really going to keep you accountable on your goals. And the more people you help when you do decide to get out there and uh, to write on the Uh, the Facebook page of a goal or something you want to accomplish, they're going to be there to help you 100%. So that's uh, really assuring. And of course, it's free. You know, it's great. You can probably meet a couple of cool people on there, uh, make some different relationships, step outside of your own personal box and things like that. And 
Now, the question is, how did I meet Stephanie? Well, the way I found out about Stephanie was through the platform Goalie.com. As you may know, I was part of this uh, new startup out of Norway. Uh, They came to New York and L.A. I flew out to both cities, recorded some videos on personal coaching. And uh, shortly here, Goalie.com is going to be launching. And you can find myself along with um, over 100 other coaches with some of the most brilliant minds in the industry. You know, everything from self-confidence issues to dieting to personal well-being, uh, motivation, everything in between. Literally uh, hundreds of videos going to be on this platform to help you along your own personal journey. I'm I'm supporting Goalie.com because they have opened the doors for me. The owner, David unbelievable person, the the most genuine person I've ever met in my life, and it would be a disservice for me not to um, thank him on this platform. And you will be hearing more about Goalie in the future, and actually I have a recording of David and I uh, sitting down and chatting about uh, why he decided to bring Goalie.com to life and um, his own personal story, and it's a really unbelievable story, so look forward to that. So like always, everybody, thank you so much, much for joining me on this episode. Thanks for dealing with the uh, poor audio quality and uh, keep on living your life. And uh, lastly, if you are interested in finding out more about Operation Self-Reset, or you're looking for your own personal way to reinvent yourself, the great place and the number one place to start is heading over to OperationSelfReset.com. About midway through on the homepage, you can sign up for the email list, and there you will find seven high-quality PDF files to help you in your own personal reset. Um, Again, thank you for all the support. Thank you for all the love. Um, Our son, Ethan, is doing well. Uh, No need to uh, send me flowers and gifts, but if you want to, feel free. No, I'm just joking around. We're very blessed. Everything's going good. We'll probably be out of the hospital tomorrow, so we'll be in here five days. But again, you know, when things go bad in your life and, and maybe you're you're down a little bit because something went wrong, you messed up at work, you said something inappropriate to somebody you love, you hurt their feelings, um, remember that you could always be in a, in a worse situation. You know, it's all about perspective and there's kids out there in the world that are hurting that aren't going to be able to do anything like you have done in completing your own personal life. Um, and and you got to think of that because if you don't, um, you know your your life can kind of get o- get out of whack. So it's great to put your life in perspective and to realize there's always somebody out there that has it worse than you. Uh, live your life to the fullest. Believe in yourself because at the end of the day, when everybody else goes away, it's all that you have. So believe in yourself because you are the only one that can truly do that. So take care of yourself. If you have any questions or want to reach out to me, uh, send me an email, Jake at OperationSelfReset.com. And we will catch you next week, Wednesday, for another great episode. We'll see you later. Thanks.